Welcome to this short talk on the basics of interpreting an arterial blood gas. Why do we do ABGs? We do arterial blood gases on sick patients to look at their oxygenation, the adequacy of their ventilation and or their acid base levels. They measure the partial pressure of oxygen in the blood, the pH of the blood, how acidic or alkalotic the patient is, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the blood, the level of bicarbonate in the blood and the calculated amount of excessive base within the blood, termed the base excess. Modern gas machines measure other levels these days, which are useful, but outside the scope of this talk. The approximate normal range of arterial blood gases is on your screen now. For simple practical purposes, we can join the bicarbonate and the base excess together, as they both tend to move in the same direction. If the partial pressure of oxygen drops below 8, then we usually consider the patient to be hypoxic. It's vital to know how much oxygen the patient is on when looking at an arterial blood gas. If a patient has a partial pressure of oxygen of 11 on air, then I'm not concerned. If a patient has a partial pressure of oxygen of 11 on 60% oxygen, then I am concerned. Why? Well, in neither case is the patient hypoxic, but in the second case, it's taking three times the amount of oxygen to ensure that the patient isn't hypoxic than in the first, and therefore there's something wrong with their lungs. Due to a quirk of fate, at sea level, the percentage of oxygen is roughly equal to the partial pressure of oxygen, i.e. 21% equals 21 kilopascals. We call the gap between what the patient breathes in and the arterial partial pressure of oxygen the AA or alveolar arterial gradient. We would expect the gradient or drop off between the partial pressure of alveolar oxygen breathed in to the partial pressure of arterial oxygen we sample to be approximately 10. If this gradient is significantly greater than 10, then it indicates that there may be a problem with the patient's lungs. If the partial pressure of carbon dioxide falls to less than approximately 4.5 due to a high respiratory rate, then this will cause an alkalosis. If the partial pressure of oxygen rises above 6.0 due to a respiratory failure, then this will cause an acidosis. If the bicarbonate rises above 26, it will cause an alkalosis. If it falls below 22, it will cause an acidosis. Acidotic patients are far more common than alkalotic ones. If the partial pressure of carbon dioxide rises and the bicarbonate falls, then this will cause a mixed metabolic and respiratory acidosis. A mixed alkalosis would be exceptionally rare. Since the body doesn't like to be acidotic or alkalotic, it will attempt to compensate for this by altering the component that isn't causing the acidosis or alkalosis. So for example, if the patient becomes hypoperfused for any reason, anaerobic metabolism will take place, producing lactic acid and causing a metabolic acidosis. The body will try to balance this acidosis by increasing the respiratory rate, blowing off carbon dioxide to try to bring the pH as close to normal as it can. Alternatively, the patient may be in respiratory failure and not clearing their carbon dioxide, which causes a respiratory acidosis. The body doesn't like this, so the kidneys retain bicarbonate over time in an attempt to balance this out. Importantly, while respiratory compensation is a fast process, metabolic compensation is a slower process, taking days to weeks to be completed. If you ever see a metabolic compensation, then it's for a chronic respiratory condition. If you ever struggle to work out what's going on with an ABG, try and drawing this diagram and plotting the figures. Whatever is on the same side of the pH is the cause of the acidosis or alkalosis, and if there's anything in the opposite direction, then that's compensation. Try to see as many blood gases as you can and get used to looking at them, interpreting them, and working out why this is happening. Good luck.